It's 10 minutes after the hour of 6 o'clock. It's a Tuesday morning, the 10th day of October 2023. I feel the need every morning to get started off on our teaching program to timestamp where we are at in the calendar here on 95.7. So you know the date, and then you can also figure out where we are at. We are in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, part two. Okay, want to let you know before we get into uh, very many of these confusing verses that prayer line is open for you right now at 505-425-3717. Good morning, Chana. I think you came in a little late yesterday, Chana, or at least you announced yourself a little late. I should uh, keep it uh, the way it is. Anyway, good morning, Chana. We'll have other people that'll be commenting on our Facebook or our YouTube channel. Sometimes Chana even goes to uh, Facebook, I mean to YouTube, to let me know that both of those channels are working good. But good morning. How's everything going in your life today? Thank you. Good. All right. Okay, now, <sighs> Daniel chapter 11. I have been reading this portion of the Bible, last three, four ver uh, chapters, excuse me, of Daniel. I have um, done some homework. I found, oh, I found a great resource that I want to share with you. If you really want to get some different insight, a detailed insight into where we are at currently. I watched, oh, probably an hour and a half to two hours of videos yesterday and even early this morning just to uh, see what uh, some of these uh, uh, Bible teaching historians uh, will tell us about some stuff. So I'm uh, asking you if you want to really get into some stuff look up on YouTube, and probably he has his own web page or something like that, but on YouTube I found a man named Bruce Gore, G-O-R-E, and uh, Brother Gore, he's got a lot of historical information, and he teaches it at about 30, 35 minutes at a time or something like that, and uh, doing a Bible study in his church. So here we are in the 11th chapter. Now let me let me set this up for you. Daniel is getting a predictive prophecy of what's going to play out basically for the next about 350 years. Okay, let me see if I can get you a better uh, time stamp than that. Well, maybe 500 years. Okay, <laughs> uh, 355, well, that's 100 and 1584 years between friends well uh what 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 the the angel is doing is telling daniel telling israel telling the world really basically what is going to happen and this is a pattern of the whole book all right we have seen the uh, image of gold, silver, bronze, and iron. We have seen the four beasts. It was the lion, the bear, the leopard, and then one beast, the fourth one that uh, he couldn't even identify it. We've seen the ram and the goat. And now we're in this portion of Scripture where all of this is just being amplified and talking about the different th the different. Uh, governments, the different empires that are going to be, and I'm telling you, basically from the time that uh, Daniel is living in right now all the way till a baby is born in Bethlehem. This is really the main point of what's going on. All of these kings that we're talking about here in this chapter, especially now, the one that we have in front of us, chapter 11, the kings that are going to be ruling and reigning in that part of the country until a little stone is cut out of a big mountain. Because don't 
lose focus on the main point. The main point is, and we found that in chapter 2 in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, and yes, you can talk about heads of gold, chests of silver, waists of bronze, legs of iron, and feet of iron and uh, clay mixed together. But really, really, and this is the way God does something. The most important part seems to be just a little detail along the way. But the most important part is that there was going to be a stone that was going to be cut out of the mountain, and it was going to hit the image, and the image was going to crumble unto dust, and the winds were going to blow it away, and that stone was going to continue to grow and grow and grow. Ladies and gentlemen, the stone is the kingdom of God. Jesus came to bring the kingdom of God and the message thereof, invitation to each and every one of us to come into the kingdom, to allow Jesus to be king over our lives. Are you going to let Nebuchadnezzar? Are you going to let, uh, let's see who would be next, the Medo Persians? Are you going to uh, 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 let the Greeks, are you going to let the Romans, are you going to let the Antichrist spirit rule and reign over you because behind these empires that are coming and going is going to be a spiritual component? Or are we going to make a decision, and we make that decision every day. We have to be seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness that's what Jesus encouraged us to do. He says, first and foremost, you seek first the kingdom, I'll take care of your business, you take care of my business. And your most important uh, uh, priority in your life today is to seek first the king. Because when you seek King Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, and you seek him in your life and you want him to rule and reign in your life and you want his Holy Spirit to lead you and you want to trust in him with all of your heart and lean not upon your own understanding and you understand he's given you great and precious promises by them, you might be partakers of the divine nature and you know that he's Lord of lords and King of kings. He's the Alpha, the May. All of these scriptures fold in together author and finisher of our faith to lead us into the kingdom. And here we are in a time that was spoken of in the book of Hebrews. Right now we are in a time of shaking. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. There's only one thing on the planet Earth today that cannot be shook, and it's that little stone that is growing and growing and growing and going to be a huge old mountain. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Have your feet. You know, you can have your feet upon a, f a firm foundation or you can have it upon the sand. Is your, is your spiritual health built upon the rock or is it built upon the sinking sand? And what Daniel is doing is Daniel is laying out the history over the next, we found out the next 500 years of what's going to happen. Now, so we're getting into this chapter again. We're in verse 15. And I know that my intros are pretty long sometimes. Okay, most of the time they are. Okay, all of the time my intros are there. But here, here, here's what's going on here. There's kings are going to come and kings are going to go. But there's one king that is king over all kings that's going to last forever, and he invites us into relationship with him. And we got, we got, we got uh, 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 different. Now, now here's, here's what, I, what I have to bring to you this morning, something that was reminded to me throughout my studies yesterday. When, when, let, let's, let's talk about Rome for a while. Who was the who was the ki the king of Rome? Who the king of the Roman Empire? What was his name? Yeah, it really wasn't a his. It was what was their name? 
there was a Caesar, a Julius Caesar, Caesar Augustus, Caesar X, Caesar Y, Caesar Z. Same way it is with the kings of the north and the kings of the south. You know, you have the king, remember, that we're looking at mostly in this 11th chapter, we're looking at the waste of bronze. Alexander the Great, and I read uh, part of the book that I have on Kindle yesterday also in my studies about Alexander the Great, was, the, was, was, was kind of the head guy over, but he only lasted 30-some years. Well, he didn't even last 30-some years because he didn't start as king till he was about 18 years old, 20 years old, something like that. I think his dad died. When, for, so he, Alexander was king for about 10 or 12 years of the Grecian Empire. But there were others, those generals, remember, the scattered to the four winds, and they fought their ways out, and they f had their own. And, and then you have the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, and that's what most of this chapter is talking about. So you get into verse 15. Oh, I didn't know when you were going to get it. Good morning, Andrea. Look at verse 15 with me. It's on the screen if you're with us on social media. So the king of the north shall come and build a siege mound and take a fortified city, and the forces of the south shall not withstand him. Even his choice troops shall have no strength to resist. Once again, this 11th chapter and even into the 12th chapter is covering the next 500 years until the little rock, that little tiny baby that's going to be born in Bethlehem that nobody's really going to know except a few uh, shepherds, <laughs> you know, and a few animals that are there inside the, the, the barn. It's, he's going to, but, but watch, the king of the north, all oh, the north, okay, the Seleucids, okay, and all the people that come out after him, the kings that come out after him, the south, okay, Ptolemy or whatever his name is, however you pronounce, and all those that are going to come up after him. So the king of the north shall come and build a siege mound and take a fortified city in the forces of the south. But in between the north and the south is going to be the precious land, the glorious land, Israel, God's covenant people that are living in this particular territory this real estate that god has saved for himself all these other ones okay we got a prince over that part and prince over that part and god divided it up but he says i'm going to keep this little corner for myself and i'm going to bring my people in and i'm going to make covenant with them cross over the jordan come on in it's the land of milk and honey So it's real confusing. I'm with you. I am with you. It's real confusing. And uh, Mr. Gore, he helped me out tremendously again today. I've seen his videos before, even these ones, and watched them uh, last night. And So the king of the north shall come and build a siege mound, take a fortified city, and the forces of the south shall not withstand him. Even his choice troops shall have no strength to resist. But he who comes against him shall do according to his own will, and no one shall stand against him. He shall stand in the glorious land with destruction in his power. So here it's talking about one of the, uh, you know, like remember we talked about there was more than one Caesar. There was more than one Pharaoh. There's more than one Ant Antiochus. You know, they... they we had uh, Antiochus I, so people say, well, that's a cool name, and, you know, I want to be like him. So then we have a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, and a seven, and all of them are wrapped up in these stories over here. But he who will come against him shall do according to his own will. Who is going to come against him? It was the, oh, my God, one is coming, the north is coming against the south, and the south's coming against the north, and they're, yeah, they're shifting back and forth with power, with, and Israel is right smack dab in the middle of them and being affected by all of these things. 
the king of the north shall come and build a siege mound and take a fortified city and his forces of the south shall not withstand him. So the north now, it's kind of like uh, who's your football team and what season is it? I remember when and we were not here and we were there and we did this and it's third, you know, almost the, the beginning, the middle of the season. And, you know, well, that's the way it was. Huh. These guys are jockeying for position, seeing who's going to be the big shots and trying to take it over in their time. You know, time, people like Alexander, people like Antiochus, people like uh, um, t the Ptol Ptolemy, P-T-O-L-O-M-E-Y, or something like that, people like the Seleu Seleucus and the Seleucian Empire, and oh, they're all a bunch of lions and bears and leopards and ugly, ugly beasts that have a little touch of the demonic behind them. So the king of the north shall come and build a siege mound, but he who comes against him shall do according to his own will. No one shall stand against him. He shall stand in the glorious land with destruction in his power. Notice the glorious land. We know exactly who, what, what it's referring to when we see the glorious land. That is the land of milk and honey. He shall set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him. Thus shall he do. He shall give him the daughter of women to destroy it, but she shall not stand with him or be for him. And uh, this is referring to the king of the north the president in, in those days, whoever the king of what, which um, um, Antiochus it was, sent his daughter down to marry the uh, king of the north's son, hoping that his daughter would sway the new young king, the teenage king, uh, over to his side. And uh, that's where all the intrigue comes. Let's play a song. I think we should play a song right about now. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back, no turning back No none go with me, still I will follow
It's 30 minutes after the hour of 6 o'clock. We're looking for a high today here in Las Vegas of 74 degrees. Northwest wind 4 to 14. Gust today as high as 21 miles per hour. Tomorrow sunny, high near 76. Windy with a west wind 6 to 29. And gust tomorrow as high as six, as 42 miles an hour. Ooh, please, not yet. But maybe Thursday, mostly sunny, high near 63, cooling off on Thursday. Very windy, west wind 26 to 35, gusts as high as 40 mi- 49 miles per hour. Slow down, DJ. Prayer line open for you right now, 505-425-3717. So as you see on the screen there, we are in the second half of the 11th chapter of the book of Daniel today. Let me bring that up for us, and let's uh, take this and this off and continue. Also, to let you know is that we have an email address that you can send your prayer request to cliff at klyn at gmail.com. Keep Cliff in prayer. He's not feeling real good. Good morning, Tim. How are you doing this morning? Verse 17. He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him. Thus he shall do, and he shall give him the daughter of women to destroy it, but she shall not stand with him or be for him. So the king of the north conceives a plot. He says, listen, we have a new king in the south, which is really Egypt, okay? We're talking about Egypt. You're talking about north. You're talking about Syria. He says, you you know where Syria is? They talk about Syria all the time. Anyway, uh, uh, the king of the north says, well, we got a nice little teenage young kid that's taken over uh, for his father. Father passed away. His oldest son is just a young young kid. He says, I have a good-looking daughter, and I'm going to propose that I send my daughter to marry the new king there in the south. And But, but daughter, this is what I want you to do. You go down over there, you get his confidence, and then we'll eat him up and we'll take over. There won't be no more king of the south or king of the north. They'll just be the king. So, he sends his daughter down to marry, and she marries, and both of them are teenagers. Young, young kids get married. One of those political setups, okay? Marriage by convenience. But somebody's, the king of the north has a plot. He has a, you know, uh, uh, you know <clears throat> well, we don't talk of too much about politics over here, but yes, we do sometimes. And you know what you know what he's expecting. Well, guess what her name is. Her name is Cleopatra. One of the many women in history in this time that's going to be called, but she is the first Cleopatra. She marries the teenage king. But instead of standing with her dad, she decides she's going to do something different. That's why it says, and watch the history, the, the, watch the prophecy that became history. He shall give him the daughter of woman to destroy it, but she shall not stand with him or be for him. Talking about her father. After this, he shall turn his face to the coastlands and shall take many. But a ruler shall bring the reproach against them to an end. With the reproach removed, he shall turn back on him. So the father finds out, of the king of the north, finds out that his daughter is not in concert with him, that she is, and what she's doing is she's looking at Rome. She's looking toward Rome, and this is where the iron begins to come in. You know, very very gently it's not good we're still in the bronze we're still in the leopard we haven't gone over into that beast that that was fierce so the father realizes that his daughter does not want to go along with his plan 
she wants she's she's telling the young she's telling her husband you know they're growing up they're growing up now you know she says let's go to rome i think that's where the power is and the father says oh i don't think rome is where the power is but i'm going to go over there and i'm going to fight against rome just to show her that rome is nothing and rome shows him that he is some that they are something and turns his face well he turns his face to the coastlands he's going to take many but a ruler shall bring the reproach against them to the end. And with the reproach removed, he shall turn back on him. Then, hello, then, he shall turn his face toward the fortress of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. So, he goes toward the west, toward where Rome was in uh, present-day Turkey, and uh, wasn't as easy as he thought it was. So he goes back home, and all of a sudden, doesn't last very long. Good morning, Flo and Joe. Also, Timothy Turner with us on uh, Facebook this morning. And in his place shall arise a vile person, to whom they will not give the honor of royalty, but he shall come in peaceably and seize the kingdom by intrigue. So oh, oh, you think, you know, we, <laughs> we read all of the uh, uh, news accounts about what could be going on in the political scene around our world. This is just, you know, let's, let's, let's try to put this in perspective what's going on we hear about what's going on in the united states of america with the president with the senate with the house of representatives and all these things going on and you say yeah and in israel it happens the same way in iran it's there's all kinds of in china and russia and who's on first and when yeah Things haven't changed too much, ladies and gentlemen. This guy comes back. Uh, uh, this guy leaves. There's a new king in the north. In his place shall arise a vile person to whom they will not give honor of royalty, but he shall come in peaceably and seize the kingdom by intrigue. With the force of a flood, they shall be swept away from before him and be broken. Also the prince of the covenant. Hmm. Very interesting. Who's the prince of the covenant? After the league is made with him, he shall act deceitfully, for he shall come up and become strong with a small number of people. So all kinds of intrigue and all kinds of bargaining going on. And I'll pay you off and you come to my side. So they come get the money. They come over to his side and then they try to stab him in the back. Things haven't changed too much, my brothers and sisters. Verse 24. He shall enter peaceably even to the richest places of the province. He shall do what his fathers have not done, nor his forefathers. He shall disperse among them, plunder, spoil, riches. He shall devise his plans against the strongholds, but only for a time. And that's the way it is. You know, these people, everybody's looking for the fountain of youth so that they can keep their power forever. And it just doesn't work that way. Hmm. Not as easy. And God, but God has put eternity in the hearts of men. <laughs> but it's not the way we think it is. He shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. Here we go again. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall devise plans against him. Yes. Verse 26. Those who eat the portion of his delicacy shall destroy him. So somebody's going to stab him in the back. And somebody, it's kind of like, <laughs> wasn't it the Last Supper? Wasn't it the Last Supper? Oh, my God, the wicked heart of man. Isn't the Last Supper that Jesus says, he who dips his bread with me, he says, is going to deny me. He's going to turn me in. He's going to, he's, <laughs> well, that's what happened to this king in this 11th chapter. 
Those who eat of the portion of his delicacies shall destroy him. His army shall be swept away, and many shall fall down slain. So somebody from his own inner circle who eat the portion of his delicacies shall destroy him. Say, okay, you know, everybody wants the power. Everybody wants to be the boss. Even in the church, everybody wants to be the boss until they're the boss, and then they don't want to be it anymore. I can, let, let's not go to, we're, we're in politics, we're not in church. But these kings' hearts shall be bent on evil. They shall speak lies at the same table, but it shall not prosper, for the end will be at the appointed time. Ha, huh, at the appointed time. While returning to his land with great riches, his heart shall be moved against the holy covenant. So he shall do damage and return to his own land. At the appointed time, he shall return and go toward the south. But it shall not be like the former or the latter. Wasn't everything that he planned out to be. For ships from Cyprus shall come against him. Therefore, he shall be grieved and return in rage against the Holy Covenant and do damage. So somebody from the north, whatever the king, you know, whatever Ptolemy it is at that particular time. No, Ptolemy was the south. Whatever Antiochus it is, one, two, three, four, five, or six. I think there was more than six, but that's the only one. And, you know, he's going to go down south. It's not going to work out for him the way that he wanted to work out. Ships from Cyprus come against him. Now he's all mad because he thought he was going to take uh, the king of the south, and it didn't work out for him. So on his way back home up to the north, he tears up Jerusalem. He says, I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. <laughs> Look at what it says in our commentary. Antiochus was compelled to retire from Egypt. Retire not in the way that you might think after 35 years of service. Antiochus was compelled to retire from Egypt by Roman ambassadors. Hmm. Uh, according to sailed to Egypt in order to prevent Syria from taking that country. Okay? So, but, and on his way home, he goes back up north to Syria, and he's so mad that he comes against Jerusalem. He will turn in rage against the Holy Covenant and do damage, so he shall return and show regard for those who forsake the Holy Covenant and forces shall be mustered by him, and they shall defile the sanctuary fortress, and they shall take away the daily sacrifices and place there the abomination of desolation. Now, we're getting into something that we can kind of sink our teeth into a little bit, the abomination of desolation. Remember that Jesus said, as spoken by the prophet Daniel, about the abomination of desolation. Huh? What happened was is this Antiochus, I think his last name was Antiochus Epiphanes. He, uh, and, and the last names that they give themselves are very, very comical sometimes and you know, telling of who they think they, they are, okay? What this Antiochus does is he doesn't get what he wanted when he went down to the southern kingdom. And he goes back and he takes it out against the Jews. And he goes out to the temple. He stops temple sacrifice. And that's when he takes a pig and sacrifices on the altar outside of the temple and uh, desecrates and that's what the abomination of desolation was. One of the times that there was abomination of the temple, it, it happened again in the time of Rome, and it will happen again at the time of the end. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong 
and carry out great exploits. So there are, there's the remnant, the covenant remnant there in verses 31 and 32. The people who know their God. See, because he's coming against them. He's destroying the sanctuary, going through all this abomination, desolation, desecration, uh, antichrist-type ugliness that's going on. But the people who know their God shall be strong. You say, how oh, good for them. Well, good for you, too, for holding on. Good for you, too, for saying, you know what? We're going to be strong in our time. We're going to be strong here. And it's a beautiful history lesson, ladies and gentlemen, from 2,500 years ago or so. By now, who knows where we're at in, t in, the, in the time clock. But it could be 200 years you know, or so before Jesus is born because that's the focal point, the stone that was cut out of the mountain without human hands. And all these kingdoms are going to come and these kingdoms are going to go. These kingdoms are going to rise and their kingdoms going to fall. But there is a king that is going to be born in a manger. Now, when they fall, they shall be aided with a little help, but many shall join with them by intrigue. That's an interesting word, intrigue. I can take you a couple of different ways when you look at the word intrigue. Uh, let's see, let's see. A plot or scheme of a complicated nature intended to affect some purpose by secret. When they fall, they shall be aided with a little help, but many shall join them huh? with a plot or a secret scheme. And some of those of understanding shall fall to refine them, to purify them, to make them white until the time of the end, because it is still for the appointed time. Remember, it says that those who know their God shall be strong and carry out great, great exploits. This is not a time, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm, and I'm tying this into where we are, but many with, uh, with verse 35, okay, those of understanding. Now, this is not a time to, for us to be crawling into our hole, looking for a cave, building a cabin out in the mountain someplace, and just riding out the storm. This is for us, a time for us to face the winds of the storm and not let it destroy us, but say, our God reigns. That's what some of the people, that's what their remnant did in these times before Messiah was born. Some of those of understanding shall fall to refine them, to purify them, to make them white until the time of end, because it is still for the appointed time. And the appointed time, at least one of the appointed times, the super was, was for a little baby to be born in Bethlehem. That little stone that was cut out of the mountain without human hands in the second chapter. Don't, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Well, you better not miss it. And not just within the scheme of the, of the history, but don't, don't miss that that little stone wants to live in your heart and he wants you to confess him with your mouth, but believe in your heart and allow him to be king over your life. As I've been saying a lot recently, we're not test driving salvation. We're embracing it and holding on to it and saying we want you to be king of our lives. Some of those understanding shall fall to refine them, to purify them, to make them white until the time of the end because it is still for the appointed time. Then the king shall do according to his own will. And uh, if I tried to tell you exactly what king in history was talking about, I would be doing you a disservice. It would be a big old guess. But there are a lot of sources out there. And remember, I uh, gave you a YouTube source. His name is Bruce 
Gore, and he has a lot of historical church history type of Old Testament and New Testament and even church uh, era. Uh, so it's kind of you, you got to go through a lot of material to find out when he's talking about uh, the kings of the south and the kings of the north and Daniel chapter eleven and twelve and all that stuff. But it's there and it's available for you. You have my permission. Then the king shall do according to his own will. He is exalted and magnify himself above every god. He shall speak blasphemies against the god of gods. He shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished, for what has been determined shall be done. Determined by who? Interesting. Until what has been determined. Well, somebody spoke it to Daniel, an angel. And hundreds of years, it's just gonna, it's just gonna, it's just gonna lay out one step at a time, one king at a time. He shall regard neither the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall exalt himself above them all. But in their place, he shall honor a God of fortresses a God which his fathers did not know, he shall honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and pleasant things. So somebody, and this could be just a foreshadowing of Antichrist, okay, I'm going to throw that one out there with you, because many of these things that you're seeing in these uh, verses here are... How would I say it? I say it, uh, dress rehearsals of repetitious events that will be happening in the history of the world later on, like the abomination of desolation that I've told you about already. And somebody shall regard neither the God of his fathers nor the desire of women nor regard any God, for he shall exalt himself above them all. Huh. Who is this guy? Yeah, that's where we got to do our homework and find out who this guy, neither the God of his fathers, was this talking about a Jewish person? But in their place he shall honor a God of fortresses, a God which his fathers did not know he shall honor. So he breaks tradition he will shall honor gold and silver with precious stones and pleasant things. He shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign god, which he shall acknowledge and advance its glory. He shall cause them to rule over many and divide the land for gain. What land is it talking about? Is it talking about the holy land? I'm not saying it is. I'm guessing that it could be right about now, but like I tell you, all of these things, are we, you know, who, 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 who are those guys that have, who's on first and what's on second, all that stuff. He shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign God, which he shall acknowledge and advance its glory. He shall cause them to rule over many and divide the land. Okay, let's see what some of our Albert Barnes says, let's see, fortress of munitions, it doesn't give us any. Uh, it was a fact that in his wars, Antiochus came into possession of the strong places or the fortified towns of the nations which he attacked. Okay, so Albert Barnes says, this is talking about Antiochus. The big question is, which Antiochus? Okay. Uh, he shall do the most strongholds. That's Joseph Benson says the temple of Jerusalem called the sanctuary of strength is where the same word mahus is used. Seems to be intended by strongholds. Uh, yeah, all kinds of, that's why I tell you. You can read the um, com com commentaries about a lot of these things and still come out scratching your head. At least I do. Verse 40. Sorry, but I just, you know, it's big. At the time of the end, so if you're looking for answers, let's go before we go into war. If you're looking for resolute 
answers. I don't have them. But I do have bits and pieces. And every time you go through them, you get a little bit more. But I have to confess is that I can't tell you. Sometimes we get into some scriptures that, yeah. And other times you just say, hmm. At the time of the end of the king of the south shall attack him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots, horsemen, with many ships, and he shall enter the countries, overwhelm them, and pass through. It's like the king of the north is going to do, you know, get strong again. He shall enter the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape from his hand, Edom, Moab, and the prominent people of Ammon. So he's going to come from the north. He's going to enter into Israel. On his way, many countries shall be overthrown. But for some reason, and probably these guys decided, we're, we, we like you. We're, 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 we're going to sign the, the agreement. You can have our women, our money, whatever you want. Just leave us alone. Edom, Moab, and the people of Ammon. He shall stretch out his hand against the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape. That's the, the king of the south, which now Rome is probably uh, entrenched a lot deeper in uh, Egypt than was before. Until, yeah, we remember uh, 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 Cleopatra number one showed up and uh, her and her, you know, teenage boyfriend, the king of Egypt, invited the Romans to come and help him. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver, over all the precious things of Egypt. Also, the Libyans and Ethiopians shall follow at his heels. And remember, when we talk, start talking about the uh, Romans, we start talking about the legs of iron and all that stuff. Let's play a song.
105.7 FM, a ministry of Cornerstone Church. It's a Tuesday morning, 10th day of October. 7 o'clock is the time, and 45 degrees is the current temperature. Not, uh, well, we were in the 30s a couple of mornings last week, but uh, still cooling off. Barometric pressures are 29.68 inches. Winds are calm. I'll have a weather report for you at the bottom of the hour. I do have a prayer line for you right now till 8 o'clock in the morning. 505-425-3717. Much encouragement from me to, for you to call that number if you need uh, prayer available for you. Uh, also, we have an email address that you can send your prayer request in. Cliff at KLYN at gmail.com. You're going to have to be a little uh, patient with the gmail.com because Cliff is not feeling very good right about now. That's why I'm having to do the first half of midday to today's program. But get into the end of the 11th chapter of the book of Daniel. Didn't know how far we were going to get into Daniel. A lot of it just had to skip over and, and get the highlights because so much is going on between uh, and, and watch, uh, Babylon, what, what, Babylon, Egypt, Babylon, Egypt, king of the north, king of the south. Alexander passes away. Four of his generals fight it out and end up with their own territories. And, 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 and really the, the focus was on the, the, the solution king to the north. And then those in the, in the south, the Ptolemy, the, the king uh, or the general and them fighting against each other and those who are going to precede them afterwards that were going to come in and keep on fighting to see who's going to be the big boss in Israel squeezed in the middle of it all and uh, seeing this whole thing coming on. But if anybody was reading the Bible, which I'm sure that people in Israel were reading the Bible, they knew what was going to happen before it happened. And there was probably a lot of people who didn't have eyes to see or ears to hear in Israel, but there was the remnant who knew what the heck was going to happen. Same way with today. You know, what's going on? Well, you know, there's war in Israel and war in Russia and there's war here and there's economic problems here. And, oh, ladies, do we have a heartbeat of what God is really doing in the midst of it all? We should. And not just one person. I'm talking collectively. There should be a people. <laughs> that's what it said. A people that know their God uh, shall do mighty exploits. And that today's exploits is bringing people into the kingdom of God. There's a crown waiting for those uh, who would uh, save souls. But news from the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many. And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and no one will help him. Okay, last verse of the 11th chapter of the book of Daniel. And you say, wow, now we can get out of this and go on to something else, the last chapter. No, 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 not so easy because <laughs> the first few verses of the 12th chapter is just a continuation of what Daniel experienced, I believe, starting in chapter 9. When, remember, he was at, by, the, by the river, he saw the, uh, the, the angel approach him. He falls down. The guys that were with him take off. Uh, Daniel stays behind, and he has to be strengthened by the angel, all of that stuff. That's when all this, and it still continues here in Dan, uh, Daniel chapter 12. At that time, Michael shall stand up the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who was found in the book. 
Now, it seems toward the end of chapter 11, as you get closer to the end and then the beginning of chapter 12, that there's other things that are going on here than just some kings in Syria fighting against the kings of Egypt. Now, the kings of Syria really represent the Babylonian empire or what was left of it. And, of course, the kings of the south represent Egypt. Egypt is always typical of the world. The world stands against the kingdom of God, and so does Babylon. Babylon is the spiritual power that stands against the kingdom of God, and Egypt is the world power, and eventually they come together into one. They're, they're fighting, you know, up until the time that Messiah was going to be born. But uh, uh, there's another thing that's going on over here. What's this, Michael, the end, the watch? Dress rehearsals, my brothers and sisters. At that time, Michael shall stand up. The great prince who stands over who stands watch, excuse me, over the sons of your people. Michael is the one, the archangel Michael is the one who stands over Israel. You know, we've seen another archangel, Gabriel. Now we see Michael. And his, you know, he's the great prince. He stands over the sons of your people, over Israel. There shall be a time of trouble such has never was since there was a nation, even to that time, and at that time your people shall be delivered, every one who is found written in the book. Now watch verse 2. See, there's where you see shadows of things to come. And those who sleep in the midst, no, those who sleep in the dust, slow down. I'm trying to finish off and uh, looking for my coffee at the same time. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. So, as we uh, get closer to finishing off our program today, the question always is, is uh, where are you going to be in the scheme of things? Those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. The question that we've always thrown out there is not whether we are going to live forever. I stand upon solid truth to tell you that you and I and everyone that you know are going to live forever. Is it, wow, really, man, really? The question is where? The question is, everlasting life or to shame and everlasting contempt? Let's look at the message real quick and see how they, uh, many who have been long dead and buried will wake up, some to eternal life and others to eternal shame. It's your choice. Which one do you want? Those are the options that every person has to deal with forever and ever until the end of time. And uh, that's what Daniel was seeing, some of these things that were going on. So tomorrow, uh, we just might finish off the book of Daniel. Daniel.